Hi guys, so Brexit hardman Steve Baker caused a mini political storm a few days ago when he appeared to suggest that a referendum for Irish unity should require a supermajority of 60%. This comment was quickly slapped down by people who had actually read the Good Friday Agreement and that included senior staff at number 10. His framing was somewhat in relation to the Brexit referendum, which he claimed should have had a similar supermajority. Now Steve was either demonstrating a massive amount of Brexit regret, or he was pretending to, many years after the fact. The supermajority idea was presented to the former Brexit negotiator for the European Union, Michel Barnier, and his response was curious. Have a listen. Do you think that we made a mistake in terms of having a simple majority in that vote? It seems to me that for a long time, from the beginning, it, it would be a little bit strange that there's such a historical, fundamental, uh, serious vote, leaving the EU, leaving the EU after uh, 45 years of cooperation, uh, will be taken by a simple majority. It, it seems to me very strange, but it's not useful to come back yeah. uh, in time. Uh, we have to, to be now, realistic. But, but I'm, I'm, do you think that we may Okay, so I agree with the latter part. There's no point going back. It's done and dusted, we need to move on. And of course, people like Michel Barnier have said that the UK would be welcome to rejoin the European Union. And people like him would do whatever they could to help the UK rejoin the European Union. No, he doesn't speak for everyone. He speaks for, I think, a significant portion of the European Union, but not everyone. And whether the UK rejoins or not will be up to the EU. But the, the other part, <laughs> I disagree with him, this idea of the supermajority. Now, what's, I'm, I'm completely against the idea of a referendum in the first place, and I've mentioned this before on the channel. I think it was a bad idea have a re having a referendum. The vote should have taken place in Parliament. Because politicians are paid significant salaries to understand the impact of uh, legislation to in, in, to understand the impact of a vote in Parliament, and and they ha and they're surrounded by advisors and people who know what they well they should be surrounded by advisors and people who know what they're talking about. So politicians, if they're not sure about something, can rely on experts, and then they they should vote accordingly. Now it doesn't always work like that, but the public don't have that privilege. The public were told a whole num a whole range of conflicting ideas when it came to Brexit. They were told that the UK would remain part of the single market. Other people were saying the UK would leave the single market. Some were saying that Britain could be like Norway or Switzerland, and others were saying Britain would not be like Norway or Switzerland. Uh, people were told things would improve. People were told that as soon as the, the vote came in, uh, negotiators from the UK government would be on their way to Berlin, not Brussels. Now, I don't know if it was David Davis had said that. So there were a whole load of conflicting ideas. There, were, there was a whole load of rubbish uh, attached to the Leave vote. And the public were expected to understand the UK's role in the European Union, how the EU functions, and the positives and negatives of both being in the European Union and being out. The public don't understand these things. The public are not as engaged in politics as politicians are. So it was an offloading of responsibility that should not have taken place. I've said this before, there should have been a vote in Parliament. The politicians should have presented a manifesto. We want to leave the European Union. This is part of our manifesto. They should have explained it to the public and then the public would vote for the political party based on that. But that's not what's happened. That's not what happened. The public were expected to uh, to understand these things and vote accordingly. Now I'm I disagree with the idea of a supermajority as well because what you do is you create an uneven playing field. Some votes are worth more than others. So if you have a sixty percent majority requirement, well, the people who vote against that. And so the vote to remain, for example, or vote to to um, to leave, the the voting is unequal. So it's easier for the status quo to maintain the situation than for anyone who wants to change the situation. So I understand the idea that you know you're going to make something, 
going to make a very serious decision for the country, you need to have per, perhaps more than 50%. I understand that. But by doing so, you undermine democracy in a sense. Once again, I'm against the idea of a referendum in this case. But if you're going to have a referendum, a simple majority um, has to be the way to go. Because as soon as you move the goalposts, you add more weight to some people's vote at the expense of others. And I disagree with that. But here we are. <laughs> the, the way forward should be for the UK to rejoin the European Union, not look back. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.